All right, tangent of cosine inverse of 3 fourths. The first step with problems like these is to not panic. It looks very complicated, but let's see what it's actually asking and see that it's really not. We're taking tangent of something. What sort of thing do we put into tangent? Well, we put in angles. And in fact, cosine inverse of a number is an angle. So let's simplify this problem by calling cosine inverse of 3 fourths just some angle. So let's say theta is equal to cosine inverse of 3 fourths. Now, by the definition of cosine inverse, that means that cosine of theta is equal to 3 fourths. OK, so now we know cosine of theta is 3 fourths, and we're looking for tangent of that angle theta. Well, we've seen problems like this before. I've given you one trig function value, and I'm asking you to find another. And whenever we do problems like this, all you have to do is figure out what is x, what is y, and what is r. Well, cosine of theta is 3 fourths, and cosine is always x over r. So why don't we let x be 3 and r be 4? And then how do we figure out what y is? Well, we use our favorite x squared plus y squared equals r squared. x is 3, so we get 9 plus y squared is equal to 16. Subtract 9 from both sides, we get y squared is equal to 16 minus 9 is 7. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. Now, is it plus or minus? In problems that we've seen before like this, not with the inverse stuff, but just here's one value of, co of a trig function, find the other, we were also given some information about which quadrant theta was in. And here we weren't, not explicitly. But remember, cosine inverse is what theta is, so that means that theta needs to be in quadrants 1 or 2, because cosine inverse always gives us an answer in quadrants 1 or 2. Now, in quadrants 1 or 2, y is positive. So we know it is actually the positive square root of 7, so we know y is the square root of 7. Now, we want to know what tangent of theta is. Well, tangent of theta is always y over x. So tangent of cosine inverse of 3 fourths has got to be the square root of 7 divided by 3. And there we have it not as scary as it looks. Well, why don't you try one? Here, let me just pull down another problem. Why don't you try sine of tangent inverse of 4? And as a hint, write 4 is 4 over 1. So try this by pausing the video, and then we'll come back and see if you did it right. All right, so sine of some angle, and we know that angle theta is equal to tangent inverse of 4. So that means that tangent of theta is equal to 4, which we said was could be written as 4 over 1. Again, we just need to figure out what x is, what y is, and of course what r is. Tangent of theta is 4, so why don't we let y be 4 and x be 1? Because then y over x is 4 over 1, which is 4. Then we figure out what r is. Well, we know that 1 squared plus 4 squared has got to be r squared. 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16, so r squared is 17. So that means that r is equal to the square root of 17. Now we always want our radius to be positive, so we don't have to worry about the plus or minus. So r really is the square root of 17. Although, remember, when we are figuring out what tangent of theta is, if we know what tangent of theta is and we want to find the other trig function, it's possible that both x and y could be negative. But in this case, that wouldn't be because, remember, tangent inverse always gives us an answer in quadrants 1 or 4. And tangent is only positive in quadrants 1 and 3, so that means that theta must be in quadrant 1, so x, y, and of course r are all positive. Now we go back to our original equation original expression, we want to know sine of an angle theta, tangent inverse of 4, and sine of an angle is always y over r, so this will be 4 over the square root of 17. And there you have it. I hope this has helped, and thanks for watching.